So yesterday we talked about Robert E. Lee. We will be covering um, one more Confederate today, and then um, one unit, and then we have two until our uh, finale episode, which will end this series that we've been uh, working on for a while. Uh, thank you so much for the support. Your viewing and everything keep, keeps this channel moving forward. I just continue to ask um, if you like and subscribe, please share, you know, little red buttons there. Would love the followers. You know, I try to do as many videos as I can a week. At least one video a week. Oh, well, a day. Um, except for weekends, because that's when I actually record everything. Um, so today we will be discussing Lee's War Horse, James Longstreet. Longstreet was born in Edgefield, South Carolina on January 8th, 1821. He was the fifth child to James Longstreet Sr., his father, and Mary Ann Dent. Much like Lee, Longstreet grew up as Southern aristocracy, but his father loved how honorable and rock-like his son was, so he began to call him Peter as a, name, a nickname. For those who don't understand, Longstreet's father was a devout Methodist, so in the Bible, St. Peter is referred to as the rock. Um, the phrase Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my church, is in reference to St. Peter, who became the first pope. So, that was kind of the long way around of explaining where Longstreet got his nickname as Pete. At the age of nine, Longstreet would go to live with his uncle, Augustus Longstreet, and Francis Eliza Longstreet. Augustus would try to get him an appointment to West Point in 1837, but it would actually be from his other relative, Reuben Chapman, that he would gain his appointment. Longstreet was a very good soldier. He excelled at the school of the soldier, horseback riding uh, and exercising. He was, however, a horrible student. While at West Point, however, he would meet his best of friends and lifelong friend, Hiram. Hiram, in his first year, changed his name to Ulysses, who would be later General Ulysses S. Grant, and the president. Longstreet would graduate 54 of his class of 56 in 1842. Grant would graduate the next year. Longstreet would be posted to the 4th Infantry Regiment assigned to General Zachary Taylor's army. He would then be part of the first, in first invasion force into Mexico. Different than his fellow officers, he was part of the initial invasion, but when the jealousy of Polk and Scott came out, he was split from his commander and assigned to the army of Winfield Scott, where he would fight alongside his friend Grant and his other friends, George Pickett and John Reynolds. It's at this point you're realizing how many of these men really knew one another. After the war, Longstreet would marry Mar Maria Louisa Garland in 1848. He would move post to post years fo the following years, Longstreet is one of the few officers that not much is actually really known about his interwar period, but he was posted to New York and New Mexico. Longstreet, though loyal to the Union, opposed, opposed to slavery, and even an early supporter of the Republican Party, could not side with the North, especially when his home state of South Carolina had fired at Fort Sumter in April of 1861. He immediately resigned from the regular army, and volunteered to defend South Carolina. He was then sent to the new Confederate capital of Richmond, Virginia, and was commissioned as a Brigadier General by Confederate President Jefferson Davis. A long, Longstreet was sent to join General P.T. Beauregard at Manassas Junction, Virginia. While on the march, he would engage and beat Generals Irvin McDowell and Israel Richardson. Then on July 21st, 1863, Longstreet would help in defeating the Union Army at the Battle of First Manassas. In, June, in January of 1862, three of his children were gravely ill, then sadly one after another died. George Pickett and his fiancée, Sally, would actually stay with Longstreet throughout the ordeal. Longstreet would be given the time to bury his children and then would return during the Peninsula Campaign. During this time, he would meet his new commander, Robert E. Lee a man he had known of before the fact. Throughout the remainder of the campaign, Lee and Longstreet would push McClellan out of the peninsula and end the campaign. 
Longstreet would then, under Lee's reorganization, be named the first Corps commander and name Thomas Jackson as the second Corps commander. This would be after the victory at the Battle of Second, second Manassas, launching all three men, Lee, Longstreet, and Jackson, to heroes of the Confederacy. Lee would then plan an invasion of the North to move into Maryland and get supplies and maybe even more volunteers, as Maryland was technically a southern state. Longstreet would often voice his concerns of the campaign. In Virginia, they were able to maintain a defense strategy and hold off the Union strikes while having an abundance of supplies. But Jackson viewed the strategy well, agreeing that the Marylanders would view the Confederates as brothers. This would not happen, and the Confederates would draw with the Army of the Potomac at Sharpsburg, Maryland, during the Battle of Antietam. The Army would return to Virginia and again prepare itself for the defense of Virginia, but also prepare for winter quarters. Lee would discover the new commander of the Army of the Potomac, uh, Ambrose Burnside, was planning to strike hard towards Richmond, before the winter set in at the town of Fredericksburg. Longstreet would arrive and begin to build up their position beyond the town of Morris Heights. Jackson would form on his southern flank and they will sit and wait for the Union's next move. Following the massacre of Fredericksburg, he would be kept in reserve at the Battle of Chancellorsville, then join Lee at the invasion of the North. Um, again, much like Lee's video, I'll just leave the links because Longstreet was such a pivotal role in the Battle of Gettysburg that this video is going to be like the Lee video that went into like a half hour long and I really don't want to do that again. Um, so let's pick up after Gettysburg. In 1863, Longstreet would transfer to the West. Ironically, at the same time, his old friend Ulysses Sam Grant was transferring to the East. Unfortunately, he would not fare well in the West against General Rosecran and Burnside in the Tennessee and Mississippi campaigns. He returned to the Army of Northern Virginia just in time for the beginning of the Wilderness Campaign. During the Battle of the Wilderness, Longstreet would become wounded, shot by fellow Confederates by accident. Ironically, four miles from where almost a year earlier Stonewall Jackson was wounded. He would go into recovery in Georgia until October of 1864, where he would rejoin Lee in the Army of Northern Virginia at the Siege of Petersburg, Virginia. When they withdrew and made their way out of Petersburg, Longstreet's Corps would engage the Union at Sailor's Creek. It is at this point the inevitable was going to happen. Lee finally surrendered on April 9, 1865. After surrendering, each corps and unit was given specific locations to surrender their long arms, colors, and leave the field. General Longstreet was first accosted by General George Custer, who threatened to fight Longstreet's veteran corps. Longstreet's only response was, If that is done, I will do my part in meeting you. Custer then withdrew, not wanting to start a fight now that the fighting was done. Longstreet led his men and surrendered to the Union Army. Before leaving, Longstreet could leave Virginia, a local Republican attorney general attempted to arrest all high-level Southern generals. Uh, Ulysses Grant stepped in and had all charges dropped for treason, allowing all the men to return home. Longstreet was different than his, com his fellow compatriots in the fact that he actually full-heartedly supported the Union abolition and was actually, after the war, now a registered Republican. He would also work in the rails for most of the Reconstruction era, following the new civil rights laws not, on not discriminating, he would be among the first repatriated Confederate generals. He, in fact, became somewhat of a pariah in the South, especially with the creation of the Lost Cause myth. It painted Longstreet as a disloyal general who did everything in his power to condescend Robert E. Lee. When in reality, he was one of Lee's most loyal generals. The reason this perception of Longstreet began was because he was pro-Union, pro-Freedom, and a registered Republican, and as his post-war career continued, he would become the ambassador of the Ottoman Empire by Republican President Rutherford B. Hayes from 1880 to 1881. So de many Democrats in the South used July 2nd and 3rd against him, though he was a strong 
strong opponent to the entire assault on both days and the Battle of Gettysburg in general. And the fact that he was a Republican and pro-Union, pro-abolition, and was a very close friend to Grant. Longstreet would go on to serve for Presidents McKinley and Theodore Roosevelt as U.S. Commissioner of Railroads from 1897 to 1904. Also in 1897, he would remarry to a woman named Hetland Deutsch. She would outlive him by 58 years. On January 2nd, 1904, only six days before his 83rd birthday, he would die from complications of pneumonia. He is one of the only Civil War generals to see the 20th century. To put that in a little perspective, for those of us born before 2000, we were all born in the same century that Longstreet was still alive. Longstreet, again, is an example of an individual who thought they were doing the right thing. Even while serving the Confederacy, though his principles were opposed to the government's, he thought his duty was to South Carolina first, which ripped him away from his friends, many of whom he would later battle. Unlike other Southerners, his name was tainted for him being rational and not falling to the Army of Northern Virginia's myth or that the myth of Robert E. Lee. Thanks for watching. Longshoe has a actually really sad memorial at Gettysburg, which I will 100% take a picture of while I'm there um, and even discuss it. Again, when I'm in Gettysburg, I'm going to be doing quick little short uh, videos explaining where I am and what we're looking at. Um, thank you for watching. You are all killing it with the support. Thanks for watching. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. It really does help the channel grow. I will have more content coming out. Been busy this past week with my family visiting, but we're going to keep moving forward. So I'll see you real soon.